math works in the world of selling, you know? And um, just a little bit about me, if we can go to the next slide here. Um, you know, I've, I've been, when I, when I first started, um, you know, out of college, that was back in 2012, I went to Towson University here in Maryland. Is anyone here, is everyone here from Maryland or is that, are, are there people from different states if you wanna raise your hand? Who here is from Maryland, raise your hand. Great, 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 great. Yeah, so I'm originally from New Jersey, but I grew up here in Maryland. I went to uh, Towson University in 2012. After that, I, I was selling insurance for State Farm. Has anyone heard of State Farm Insurance? Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there? Yeah, yes. so I, I used to do, I used to sell insurance for them. I used to call people and, you know, try to get them to change over to State Farm. Um, after that, I worked for TD Ameritrade. I sold investments there. And then I sold some more insurance for a different company. And um, I sold loans so that people can help pay off their debts for a company called Delmarva Funding. And right now, as you can see on my um, bio, I'm currently selling software for nonprofits at a company called Network for Good. So if you're looking at the, my bio, you're noticing a trend that I've been doing a lot of selling. So the, the topic of today's, uh, you know, um, ask, ask an ask expert session is called, you know, mathematics in selling. So today I'm going to hopefully show you how math integrates with selling. And um, if we go to the next slide, before I did all of this, I was just like you guys. I was, this is me back in, back in middle school, way back in the day. I was like 13 or 14 years old then. And, um, you know, I was just like you, getting, getting through school, trying to learn as much as I can. And, you know, working with people like Mr. Field to help me understand how things work. I'm actually inspecting uh, a, a, the new $20 bill right there. Getting oh, through school, <laughs> yeah, you can see I'm, I'm looking at the $20 bill, but getting through school and learning and growing is as simple as ABC. As you can see, there's an ABC there. All you have to do during this presentation and in life and in school is always be curious, you know, don't stop learning, you know, con con constantly push yourself. Justin, if you want to move through the, through the uh, other slides there, it's like, there's me. <laughs> Always be curious. Oh, <laughs> you see that? All right, great. So, um, so in regards to selling, um, what that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, just the the pure definition of selling. If you look it up on Google or on the Webster's De Dictionary, there's a couple different definitions of it. Um, the first definition, if you can click on that is to give or hand over something in exchange for money. The, the next uh, definition of selling is of course, you know, to persuade someone about the merits of a thing or the idea of a service. So it's, it's really what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis is calling people, having conversations with them, kind of like how we're doing it now because I can't talk to people in person because of COVID. So I call people and I invite them to a conference like this, and then I show them what my company can do to help them. Does that make sense? So I, I'm, I'm showing them and persuading them on how we can help them better themselves. But the way math works in this, as you'll see on the next slide, is that, um, oh, for, before, we, before we go there, I'd like to ask the question to everyone here, what are some good examples of a sales job? Now that you know what selling is, can anyone here uh, think of a good sales job that, that you've done before or that you've heard of? So if you raise your hand on the Zoom toolbar, then I can unmute you. And, and you may earn some extra credit. Nick? Ooh, extra credit, it's on the line. Nick? Um, an example of a sales job is like a car salesman. Great. That's the first one that came to my mind too. That's a great example. Yep. Kelsey? Anyone else? Oop, I just moved it, Kelsey. Sorry. Um, a financial service sale agent. Great. Wow. 
great. And those are really popular these days because the market are really crazy these days, you know, with, with COVID and everything. So that's, that's great. Excellent. Therese. Like a retail salesperson. Sure. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, if you go to a, a store like um, Nordstrom's, which, you know, they're, they're opening back up. If you go up to the top level of Nordstrom's, usually people come to you and say, hey, can I help you out with anything? Those are salespeople, you know, because they get to know you. They, um, they try to understand what you're looking for. And then they show you things that you may be interested in. And if, if you purchase some of those clothes on the top level of Nordstrom, they'll, they'll get a commission. And okay. I'll explain what commission means in just a moment here. But thank you for those examples. Are there any other, um, is there anyone else who has examples of sales jobs? Yeah, we got one more. Christ, I'm selling houses. Awesome, yes, yes. And this is a great time to sell houses because interest rates are so low right now. So a lot of people can get a nice house uh, for a nice low interest rate without paying too much. But you'll learn all about that eventually. Anyway, great. So moving on. Um, my other question, well, actually, no, this, this is the reason why um, I've been in sales for most of my, for most of my career, because sales actually pays very, very well. Um, New York Times uh, did a, a survey uh, not too long ago, and they estimated that salespeople make as much as four times more than the other employees make inside of that same company. And the reason why is what you're going to learn today. It's because of the way that the math works when it comes to making a sale. Because if you look at that slide, that little red section right down there, Justin, if you click on the next slide, it'll highlight that section. The reason why salespeople make more is because not only do we receive a salary, you know, like a base salary of say, you know, 30,000 or 40,000 or 50,000 a year, but we also make a percentage of the sale. So um, Justin, do you want to, do you have an example like that you wanted to share at this point or? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. all right. Let's, let's, uh, let's all come back together here for a second. Can everyone hear me? Okay. So let's say you are a, uh, you are a car salesman, right? So you're selling cars, okay? And who has, okay, and then there's a Chevy Cruze, all right? And uh, you have to sell it. And then Keenan walks in to the lot and you say, hi, Keenan, do you wanna buy my Chevy Cruze? And he says, yes, I do. All right. Now, as a car salesman, you are gonna make money from your boss. He's going to pay you, let's say $10,000. But because you sell that car to Keenan, what's going to happen? Are you going to get more money or less money? You're going to get more money. But now listen to this. The Chevy Cruze that Keenan is buying costs $12,000. So when you sell him that Sorry, Keenan, I know that's a lot of money. When you sell him that car, do you get to keep the whole $12,000? No. No, I'm sorry. You probably don't even get to touch it, all right? But what is gonna happen? Because you sold Keenan a car, is your boss gonna give you something extra? No. Micah? No. No, he is. When you're a salesman, if you sell something, then your boss gives you more money. And so if you sell two cars, then you get even more money. Mm -hmm. And so you don't get the, if you sell the car for $12,000, you might get $500. And the amount that you do get is called commission. Yep. So can someone in their own words explain back to me what commission is? You can raise your hand because I can see you if your camera's on. Ayo, go ahead. Commission is more like game money. That's exactly salary for like selling stuff to the customer. 
What is that? It's not part of this one, Larry. Well, it's kind of hard to hear you. Yeah. Did you hear that, Dave? No, it was kind of breaking up a little bit. Okay, sorry. Okay. Does someone else want to try? Ian. Go for it, Ian. Um, so what I think you said is that um, when you sell something, you don't get all the money, but you get a percentage of it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Yep. All yep. right. Yep. So you, you get some of it. Yep, you get some of it. And the cool thing is, like, the more you sell, the more you can make. It's not a job that pays you the same amount every year. If you want to make more money, all you have to do is sell more stuff, you know, because you'll be able to earn the commission and the bonus as a reward for doing a good job. So that's, that's why sales pays very well. Now, my question is, why doesn't everyone do it then? You know, if it pays so well, why isn't everyone a salesperson? <laughs> so if we go to the next slide, we'll figure that out and we'll, we'll understand why, um, why that is. Well, my question to you guys is, have you ever sold anything like at all, like as a Boy Scout or no, Girl Scout no. or anything like that? I've not sold a kid before in my life. Okay, it looks like yeah, yes. 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 So it looks like a lot of people have sold things. So um, let's let's pick someone who sold something before. Who who would like to? Ex okay, I see Nick. Nick, why don't you explain to me what you sold and what your experience was? Well, I've actually sold several things. Um, my brother and I are entrepreneurs. Um, -ish. We have a um, business, uh, lawn care and whatever. Uh, but also, my friend and I did a um, lemonade stand. Um, mm -hmm. So, would you want me to explain again? Um, you simply don't... what your experience was. Oh, well, I feel like this is answering why aren't more people salesmen, but to be a salesperson, you need a lot of charisma and uh, ability to talk to people and to be very convincing, um, which is hard for some people. You really need to be a people person, and I am. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's good. And uh, the reason why is because, um, you know, if you're at that lemonade stand, like Nick was, and if you're not a people person, what's going to happen to you, Nick? Will people stop and listen to you and buy lemonade or will they walk by most of the time? Uh, excuse me, do, would, you, would you like to buy some le lemonade? <laughs> yeah, that. Um, exactly. They're, they're, they might think like there's something wrong with the product because you aren't confident in it. Um, they're less likely to listen to you. Um, that there is any worth in the product, but mm -hmm. if you're confident, um, co confidence is worth a lot more than a lot of people think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's certainly a factor in it. Absolutely, and um, and that that's that's why it's it's not it's not for everyone. You know, it it takes it takes some time to get used to that, putting yourself out there. And uh, the other part of the reason, as you're going to see on the next slide, is because what can happen when you put yourself out there is you can get rejected a lot, you know, and uh, where you say, hey, would you like to buy my lemonade? And they're just, no, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm not thirsty right now. Or no, I'm, you know, they just say no, or they keep on walking by. Or Nick, if you were like there with your lemonade stand, I'm sure a lot of cars just drove by without even stopping at all, you know? So if you think of that as rejection too, there's a lot of rejection that can happen when you're trying to sell something and have someone buy something that you're, that you're producing, you know? And if you're not ready for that, it can be kind of discouraging, kind of like how this next slide looks, you know, where a lot of people say no, and you just, you're like out there in the heat, you know, sweating, you know? When I, was, uh, when I was younger in high school, 
I, I was going door to door, knocking on people's doors, trying to sell them basement finishing systems. So you can imagine me going from door to door, knocking on these people's homes. They, they open the door and they hear that I'm trying to sell them. If I'm not confident and if I'm not happy and if I'm not like a nice person to talk to, more than likely they're gonna be slamming that door in my face. <laughs> You know, and I look like this guy on the, on the slide where I'm like sweating, I'm sad. But the other thing about sales, the good thing about it is that some people do say yes. So Justin, if you want to click on the next slide, most people say no, but some people do say yes. And just click it again, just, Justin, please, Mr. Peel. Yep. Okay. And, um, and essentially, you know, that's what we're looking for. So this is where the mathematics comes into sales, because if you look at it in a, from a bird's eye perspective, if you, if you talk to 10 people and only one person says yes out of those 10 people that you talk to, what percentage is that of your yeses, of your conversion? So you said, you said one, one, we got one yes. Yes. And we talked to 10 people, right? Yep. Okay. And some people are raising their hand. And your question is, what percentage? All right. Now, what percentage? Sorry. Uh, all right. Jaden, can <laughs> you answer, answer that question? Uh, 10% of the people, people say yes, if you have only one person. 10%. Is that right, Dave? That's right. That's right. Okay, then you get a point. All right. Now, that 10% <laughs> that you see there, that's what we salespeople call your conversion ratio, if you want to write that down. in the Write that world. down. Conversion. <laughs> What is the conversion ratio? Yeah, the conversion ratio is how many people you can convert from the marketplace into a sale. And that really comes down to a lot of different factors. Like, of course, your charisma, like we were talking about, your ability to convince people, how good your product is, how many people actually need it, um, the climate of, of, the, uh, of the marketplace, but the better product you have and the better you are at selling it, you'll have a higher conversion ratio. And that will result in more commission. And more commission results in more pay, you know, more money, you know, to buy a, a new house for your family and things like that. So the conversion ratio is really the critical piece that we salespeople look at when we're trying to calculate how many people we even need to talk to. Because once you figure that out, you can basically define how much you'd like to earn for yourself and your family. Once you understand what your conversion ratio is, I can, I can say to myself, okay, now that I know my conversion ratio is 30%, you know, and my commission level is 10%, I can figure out how many people I need to talk to in order to receive a certain amount of pay. It's not defined by what my employer says I'm getting paid every hour. You know, it's not an hourly pay. It's how many sales can I make? And how many sales I can make depends on my conversion ratio, because that tells me how many people do I have to talk to in order to close a deal. So some people say yes, and that's all we need, you know? Um, if we go to the next slide here. Hold on. All right, so that's what you said, right? Once yep. you know the conversion ratio, you can calculate how much money you'll make. That's right, that's right. And another illustration that I'll share with you to help un you understand that selling is all just about numbers, it's all about how much activity you put out there because once you understand your conversion ratio then it's simply about putting in the activity and then the result will be it's, it's much like sowing seeds um, 
Um, if you guys have, you know, read that parable about sowing seeds, you know, it's like these seeds that we plant are all the phone calls that I make every day, all the emails that I send every day, all the text messages that I send. And like you were saying, Nick, uh, the, the seeds that you would have on, um, you know, for like the, uh, the lemonade stand would be all of the conversations that you have. If how many people you're able to stop and have them listen to you, that would be considered a seed that you would plant. Now, the result of that conversation can either be positive or negative, you know? And if we go to the next slide, here's what can happen as you're sowing those seeds, okay? You know, sometimes the seeds that you plant will fall on a rock, sometimes they'll fall among the thorns, sometimes they'll go by the wayside, sometimes they'll actually result, you know, fall on the good ground and actually result in a sale. So an example of this is like, if they fall on a rock, is like, if you try to talk to someone and they completely ignore you, okay? It's like they're hard headed, they're not even listening to what you're trying to say. And that happens, and that's fine, you know? You need to understand that this will happen, that's part of the process, okay? The sooner you can get through that, the better you can realize the fact that some of, some of the conversations that you have will result in positivity. Um, the, other, the other situation that can happen is if they fall among the thorns, this is like if they get distracted. Let's say you're running your lemonade stand, you're trying to sell to someone and you're having the conversation, you're showing them the lemonade and then their kid starts crying like, mommy, mommy, I wanna go home, I don't want lemonade. And they get distracted, you know, and you're not able to make the sale. You're not able to sell the lemonade. That can happen too. What I do in my job, um, what ha I, I, I'm selling to these um, organizations and like what happened recently, you know, with, with, with COVID happening, a lot of these companies that I was trying to sell and having conversations with, they got distracted by COVID, you know, and they had wow. to figure out other things that they had to do to survive. And so they didn't have time to talk to me. So they got distracted. So the thorns are, are other, other distractions, other um, things that the people have to do, which takes away their attention from you. So that happens. Um, the other situation on the bottom left is if they fall by the wayside, you know, that's if another lemonade stand is across the street, you know, and uh, they may have a better price or they're a little bit more charismatic than you. They have a loudspeaker phone and lights. And so the person who is about to buy your lemonade goes across the street and buys someone else's lemonade. That happens too, and that's fine. But the best part is when it happens um, on the bottom right-hand corner, you know, a small percentage of the people that you talk to will actually buy the lemonade. And that is, that's what we're going for, okay? And um, so that's really where the mathematics comes in because a, a fraction of the people will not work a fraction of them will get distracted. Another fraction will get taken by our competition, but the little fraction that's left who buy the product, that'll be more than enough to make our, our bosses happy and also pay us the commission to make our families happy too. <laughs> so, um, so going on to the last slide here, another summary of the, the entire process. This is really gonna help you summarize the overview because what we're doing is there's the general public. Justin, if you, uh, Mr. Field, if you can back it up a little bit. Okay. The, it, when, when we're talking about selling in the real world, it starts with the general public. This is everyone that you know, whether they're on social media, in the world, um, they're in your, in your school, in your church, whatever the case is. Does anyone know about how many people there are in the world right now? I see oh. people were typing their answers in the chat. Anybody you can think? Google it if you want. <laughs> Ian, what do you think? You what? 6.8 billion. That's good. I, I thought it was 6.8 billion too. Then um, that's as of 2018. But the estimation, the estimate is around eight. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's good. That's good. So the bottom line, there's, the, yes, that's good. I found an answer around 8 billion. Okay, if we go to the next slide, Mr. Field. 
<laughs> yeah. So bottom line, there are a lot of people in this world, okay? But the thing is to increase your conversion ratio, we shouldn't be spending our time on everyone in the entire world. What we need to first do is filter out all of that, all of those billions of people, you know, <laughs> because that's way too many people for us to even talk to. So what you have to do as a salesperson is you have to, uh, Mr. Field, if you go to the next slide, filter. Filter all of these people, all of these billions of people, because if we try to sell to all of them, it will, it will use up a lot of our resources and a lot of our time. And a lot of people may not, may not even be qualified to buy what we're trying to sell, you know? Like for example, if you are a student and you need study materials, I'm not going to approach you and try to sell you a, um, you know, a Lamborghini or something like that. You don't need a Lamborghini right now, okay? So you're not, you're not in my target market. Okay, so I need to filter you out. I need to be looking for, you know, business owners, um, CEOs. I need to be looking for multimillionaire people who can afford a Lamborghini, right? Um, so you, you, what, you, what we do is we first filter out the entire general public by, it, by implementing what's called an ICP. If we go to the next slide, just, uh, Mr. Field. ICP stands for an ideal client profile. These ideal client profiles are the people who will most likely be willing to buy our product, right? So if I'm running a lemonade stand, I'm looking for people who, you know, maybe have kids, right? Because their kids like sweet things. And I'm looking to set myself up in a hot area where there's a lot of, um, a lot of foot traffic you know, and um, I'm looking for people who are thirsty. <laughs> so if they can fit in with that profile, then I will have the highest success rate. If I see someone holding a drink already, they're most, like, they're most likely not going to purchase my lemonade. So I, I shouldn't even bother with them. Because um, imagine if you're, if um, Nick, if you're on your lemonade stand and you see two families, one family, they already have Slurpees in their hand, the other family, they, they, they look like they're sweaty, you know, their kids are like whiny and fussy and it's hot day and they don't have any drinks in their hand. If you talk to the ones that already have Slurpees in their hand, the other family will walk by and not buy your lemonade. So you have to prioritize, right? So you have to, you have to fit first create your ICP, your ideal client profile to filter out everyone else and focus in on people who are most likely going to buy. So once you have that, you can optimize and really improve the conversion ratio, okay? So after you have your ICP, then the next step is that um, you target, you know, you target your market, you, you turn the, you convert the general public into a targeted market, you know? So these are the families that will really most likely buy your product. And if you go to the next slide, Justin, you can see um, I've highlighted these, these little ratios here. For each stage that you talk to someone, there is a conversion ratio. This entire, um, this entire pyramid that's upside down that you're looking at, what we call that is a pipeline. It's called a pipeline, a sales pipeline. Okay. And we call it a, yeah, we call it a sales pipeline because as your target market flows through the pipeline, some people will stay, will stick through the process and actually become a sale. They'll actually buy your product, um, but others will fall out. So on each stage of your pipeline, there's a conversion ratio. Okay. So it's good to organize it like this so that you can really prioritize your focus and understand who you need to talk to because you're gonna wanna move the general public into the target market by using your ICP model and then bringing them into an active stage and then the hot stage and then finally 
the result is that they, they agree to purchase the product that you're selling. Um, so this is really where the math happens because if you can understand your conversion ratios at each step, you can basically predict exactly how much activity you need to do to reach your goal. So if we go to the next slide, Mr. Field, we'll have some examples here. Yep, there are the con conversion ratios. And the name of the game, really, what it comes down to it is not only the charisma, but also whether or not the thing that you're doing is solving a problem. You know, that's how really we're going to get a sale. If I don't have any pants or if I don't have any shirts and I need a shirt, you know, to go to work, I need to buy a shirt. My problem is that I don't have a shirt, right? <laughs> so if I can, if, if a salesperson calls me and says, hey, I have shirts for you, that, that's solving my problem. And I'm going to buy that, you know? So at the end of the day, we, we, we salespeople need to identify which problems we're going to sell. If you're selling lemonade, the problem that you're selling is thirst, you know? Providing people with something refreshing and cool and sweet, solving that problem of thirst and lack of refreshment. So as an example here, on the next slide, Mr. Field, we have a thousand leads, for example, and a lead, um, the, the definition of a lead is someone who is interested, you know, someone who is interested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is like, if someone comes to your website, if you have a website, this is if someone, um, you know, walks into your office, if you have an office, this is someone who's, who's slightly interested, you know, and then, and if they fall in within, if they, if they fit your ICP, then you're going to want to target them and put them into the, uh, the lead section. Okay. So out of the thousand leads, for example, if my conversion ratio from my generally interested people is one third, what's one third of a thousand? I already have the answer there for you. <laughs> That's 333. So I have 333 engaged prospects. Now, if my conversion ratio from the active engaged people is also one third, how, how many people will be considered a hot prospect as someone potentially willing to buy? Can you set a question again, please? Yes, if my conversion ratio is one third and I have 333 people who are interested and engaged, thank you, yes, yes, yes. So yeah, if, if I have, 30, if I have um, 333 people that are interested, how many people will become a hot prospect? Exactly, Jeez, exactly, 37. Yep. Now, the hot prospects are people who understand the price. They, they understand that they have a problem that I can solve. They like me because I'm charismatic, you know, and they are ready, willing, and able to buy. Those are the hot prospects. So if I have a one-third conversion ratio from there, then I will have 111 qualified opportunities and these people, these people who are qualified opportunities are really the ones who I want to focus in on. And they can, they can potentially buy my product if they have the money because I'm solving their problem. And, um, but still, we need to convert those. And if my conversion is one third of that, what's one third of 111? Yep. 37. Yes, yes, I'm seeing, uh, yep. There we go. So that's right. So out of those 30, uh, so those 37 people are essentially my sales, okay? Now, if, if I was able to earn $20,000 in total sales from that, from those 37 people who purchased my product, what is the average price of my product?
So the average price, if this is your total sales? Yep, those are, that's, yep, the total sales is what I get from those 37 people. But what's the average buying price? What, what's, what are people paying for that on average? How do we figure that out? Anyone? Sounds like an algebra question to me. <laughs> mm. It looks oh. like looks like AO AO has the answer. Go for it, AO. IO. IO. Yep. Yep. There it is. So people are paying on average $540 for my product, which is pretty cool. Okay. So, um, so yeah, that, that's really, you know, the, the overview of selling. So you can really, if once you know the averages and the conversion ratios, you can easily figure out, you know, how many leads you need to have and how many calls you need to make in order to reach a certain goal you know and you 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 are the one who can define that you know so um on this last slide we have a pretty cool um real life example you know and this is pretty close to uh to how my life works with uh with commissions with my job at network for good you know i have to figure out how many phone calls do i have to make every day in order to me to, for me to earn three thousand dollars in commission per month, you know, and um, this is something that's pretty fun to understand because basically, if if I have a thick skin and if I don't, um, if I stay charismatic and if I continue to do the right things and just make these calls, my income can be very predictable and I can even increase it if I want to, you know. So this is the question, approximately how many phone calls do I have to make every day in order for me to earn $3,000 in commission per month? Now, this is a hard question without understanding the conversion ratios and the average sale prices and everything like that. So let's go ahead and figure this out. Um, just uh, Mr. Field, if you wanna click on the next slides, we're gonna be providing the, um, the variables, all right? So here are the variables. I have a 3% conversion ratio on all my calls that I make. And I have a 30% conversion ratio on, ev on, on every sale appointment that I attend. And the last piece that you need to know is my average sale price is $3,100. Wow. Yeah. So the companies that I'm selling to are paying on average $3,100 for the product. Okay. Some expensive lemonade. Oh yeah. <laughs> but once you know these, these percentages, what we can do is you can basically say, okay, I need to make a certain amount of calls every day in order to be successful. And it's really easy to make phone calls. You just pick up your phone and dial the, dial the numbers, you know? So you can really just uh, decide what you'd like to do. So, um, so wow, did someone already get the answer, Ian? No, that's not it, that's not it. So this, this, is, this is, ooh, Caitlin, getting, getting warm there. <laughs> it's close. Oh, she went to 50 <laughs> Now you're just guessing. Who can explain? Come on, are you guys guessing? Oh my Who goodness. They can explain their work. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no, no, no. Ooh, Caitlin, you're, you are really. Wow, Elijah, that's pretty close to. Ooh, Albert. I think Albert was the closest. Caitlin, can you, or Shereen, can you guys explain uh, what you did to calculate your answer? Ooh, ooh, Micah, hey, looks like we found the answer there between Micah and a couple other people. That's a good oh, answer. Micah? Yeah. All right. Well, Micah, tell us what you did. All right, so basically, you gotta, don't you have to, like, divide 
of 3,100. You said divide it? Yeah. By what? By 30. By 30 percent? Yeah. Okay, so you want me to write 30? Is that what you want me to write? Yeah. Uh-oh, Mr. David's scratching his, his beard. I don't know if he likes that. Dave, what do you want to say? All right. That's how I got. Um, who, who that? That's the answer uh, is going to be 103. That doesn't answer. Sure. What's that? That division, the answer is going to be 103. 103? Yes. Yeah, that doesn't result in the uh, the, the, the answer there. Well, you do get 103, though. All right. Mm -hmm. Not it. Should we start? We're, we're going to start over. <laughs> hey, Micah, thanks for getting us started, though. Yeah. All right, you want to ask him a leading question? Let's see. Um, well, a, a good leading question is if my, um, let's see. Here. Let me see what we, who is going to get the Chick fil A gift card for getting this right? I thought it was an Amazon gift card. Oh, you know what we need? I'm sorry. There's, there's another variable here, Justin. If, if you, I think there's another slide, there's another button to push. There it is. We need that variable that my commission is 10%. That is so unfair. That is a critical variable to know. Okay, so now that you know all the variables, I apologize that you didn't have it originally, but now you should be able to solve this problem pretty easily. Is it Chick-fil-A or Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk we all know you. we're not getting one. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Field owes me like four. Okay. Oh, stop, stop. Mr. Field. <laughs> all right. I've been keeping track. I may have told a couple fibs. <laughs> okay, That's I'll ask the you a statement of the century. <laughs> a good leading I'm question for you is. Ooh, wait, 61, no, no, it's not. Nine. Even if it worked, in order to press, you have to press it twice and three or four times to exit a tab. This is what the article or whatever that stupid thing is called. Why are you talking to me? See, you see, you see. You see Emmanuel, go on mute. On Zoom, it's supposed to be double times. Can't do that. 10%. So my first question is, if my, que if my commission is 10%, okay, then how much, how, many, how much in total sales do I have to earn to earn $3,000? How much sale, how, much, how many sales do I have to make? Like, what's the total, what is the total value of sales that I have to earn for my company to earn Three thousand dollars. If my commission is only ten percent, three hundred. Three hundred. No, no. Three hundred ten. Even keys. What is the total value of all of the sales that I make? Let's say I, I'm selling cars that are valued at uh, ten thousand dollars, right? I'm selling cars that are valued at $10,000. My commission is only 10%. You know, how many? You need to make at least 10 sales. Yes. Yes. All right. But, all right. So we want to know how much do we have to sell in order to make uh, $3,000, right? Mm -hmm. So how mm -hmm. do we write, who knows how to write 10% in decimal form? 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Okay, mm -hmm. so 60, decimal form, that's 0 
Eight. That's zero point zero. Is it okay? So we multiply that mm -hmm. by zero point one times the total sales, and we get three thousand. Okay, so I'm just gonna write write that is zero point one x equals three thousand. All right. Sixth graders, seventh graders, who can solve that one step equation? What do we yep. got? Then multiply it. It is being multiplied. What's the inverse operation for multiplication? Then I think someone said division. division. All right. Division. So what do we have to divide both sides by? That. Zero that was hard to understand, but I'm thinking you said divide by 0 0.1. There it is. And so x equals 30,000. Readers, 30, what is 3,000 divided by 0 0.1? 30,000. 30,000. Good. 30,000. Good. Good. Uh, yes. So this is step one. That's perfect. So those are the total sales that I have to make in order for me to earn 3,000. And the reason why is because after I sell $30,000 worth of software, I'm getting paid $3,000 commission. Why? Because you didn't make the software. Yep. And because my commission level is 10%, I'm earning 10% of $30,000. So 33,000, $3,000 is what I keep, okay? So that's step one. So now we figured out how many, how much in total sales that I have to make. But to get to $30,000 of sales, what we're trying to figure out is how many phone calls do I have to make in order to reach $30,000 worth of sale? <laughs> So we're going to do something similar using, using the, um, using algebra, really. You know? mm -hmm. So what we need to figure out next, if my average price of the product is $3,100, how many units is that? How many units do I have to sell? If my average price is $3,100, how many units do I have to sell? Ten. Just about. Just about. Ab about ten. Yep, exactly. Ten units will give you exactly $3,100. That's right. Now, did you get that? Um, divide 31000 um, what? No, sorry. Divide 3,100, um, by 10, you get 31, and then... Divide, uh, the two numbers. I pretty much did trial and error of... <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, how many... <laughs> like... Three thousand one hundred times nine? No, that's only twenty-seven thousand. So how about times ten? Three thousand one hundred. Okay, wait a minute. Wait, no. What? Yeah. Mr. Field is writing it down right now. All wow. we have to do wait, is wait. divide thirty thousand by thirty one hundred. And that tells me on average, you know, how many units I need to sell. And now the fifth graders can't sell a part of a about, unit. The fifth graders are learning about place value of decimals. So who can tell me the different place values that we are we have right here? Thousands, hundreds, and tens. There you go. All right. And so, Dave, what do you want us to round to? I would say let's round up. You know, it's safer to round up in sales. 
So if I oh. saw that I need to sell 9.6, I would try to sell 10 units. All right, so the wavy lines, 9.67 is approximately wavy line. 10 units. Yeah. Right? Okay. Great. All right, so now that we know how many units we need to sell, how do we get to 10 units? Like, in order for me to sell 10 units, how many phone calls do I have to make? How many appointments do I have to make? And that the answer can be found by looking at the conversion ratio. Because um, for me to sell 10 units with a conversion ratio of 30% on every appointment, I have to ask myself, how many appointments do I need to set in order to sell 10 units? If my conversion ratio is 30%. So it's gonna be a similar process of what we did before with the algebra. Mm -hmm. Got some answers in, in the chat. Give us a hint, Dave. Okay. So what do we need to divide 10 by in order? Oh. Yes. Wait, no. No. What do we have to? Yeah. Um, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. What do we have to divide 10 by in order to understand how many appointments I need to set? Oh, I see here 30% conversion ratio for appointments and 3%. Mm -hmm. Good, Nick. Yes. So we have to divide 10 by 30% or 0.3. Oh. Mm hmm. And what do you get when you do that? And this will tell me. No, this will tell me that I need to set 33 appointments, about 33 appointments. Okay, you know why? Because if I set 33 appointments in my conversion, if I'm converting 10% of those into actual sales, that's going to get me to my $30,000 of sales and my $3,000 commission. So, I need to set 33 appointments every month. Okay. Now for me to get to 33 appointments, how many phone calls do I have to make? We're going to use the conversion ratio again. I think you guys are getting the hang of this because now all you have to do is do the same thing that we did before. Exactly. Exactly. We divide the 33 by the conversion ratio of 3%. Well, I know that you guys are going so quick. 33 divided by? Point, point zero 0.03. Yeah. Or 3%. That's 1,000. You need to make about 367 calls a day. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. Not 306. It. Well, That's seeing as they're about 30 days each month, and then 1,100 calls a month, that rounds to about 367. If you divide 1,100 by 30, you get 366 and two thirds. I rounded that up. I divided these numbers in my PKI 3. I got 1,100. Mm -hmm. one yep. So we've got 1,100, 1,100. That's how many calls I have to make every month. Okay. Now, oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of calls. Can you text them or something? <laughs> I'm sure we can. I'm well, sure actually, we it would probably be less effective because tone of voice and expression usually help in charisma. 
it's exactly. just about the phone calls. Exactly. That helps with the, with the charisma and the conversion ratio. So now, that's how many that phone calls I have to make to, month. to test to text. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the other, the other, the other thing that you have to be aware of is I'm only working five days a week. So the way to properly figure this out is I'm actually, really yeah, you days. have to understand I'm only working five days a week. I'm you not. You didn't not, say that. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's what people usually do. <laughs> sorry, that's. Um, so if I'm working five days a week, what we then have to do weeks. is ask ourselves, how many weeks are there in a month? Four. Exactly. So we take 1,100 and how, what do we divide the 1,100? 55. Exactly. Let's exactly. raise our hand. You are. All right. The answer is 55. Exactly. That's it. What am I dividing by? 20? You're dividing. You're dividing the 1100 by 20 by four, because there are four days in the week. I'm, I'm sorry, four, four weeks Please. in the month. <laughs> and then uh, that gives us 275 calls a week. Okay. And then divide that by five days out of the week. So we divide the 275. I'm just going to uh, divide by 20. No. Um, 55. Got that in the same way. Guys, for clarification, he does not do 1,100 calls a day. That's how many he needs to make in a month. So five days, he does not make 5,100 calls. <laughs> wow. Okay. 55 yep. calls a day. 55 calls a day. What does it feel like to make 55 calls a day, Dave? Well, you know, you got to drink a lot of water. <laughs> make sure your, your mouth stays nice and moist or lemonade. Right, Nick? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, considering no, no. the sourness of lemonade, it probably wouldn't be the best for keeping exactly. your throat. <laughs> exactly. But the bottom line, the moral of the story, you guys, is once you understand your conversion ratios, you can basically define, you, you can understand like how many calls you need to make in order to reach a goal. So if I would like to earn $6,000 now instead of 3000 how many calls do I have to make now? What's your say? If I would like to earn six thousand dollars, one hundred and ten. Exactly. All you have to do is multiply your calls per day by two. If you want to double your income, you double your activity, and that's the beautiful thing about sales: is you can control, to a large degree, how much income you earn once you understand your conversion ratios. So, with that being said. You know, this has been excellent. I appreciate your time, Mr. Field. Sorry for going a little bit over time with, you, with, with your class here. Um, I'd like to turn it back to you guys and see if you have any questions or comments. Does anyone want to ask any questions? Is it fun doing your job? It is, it is. That's that that can be a challenge for some sales jobs because if you're not having fun doing it, making those 55 calls a day can be very uh, grueling, you know, especially if there's a lot of people saying no. So you have to find a sales job that really you feel good about what you're selling. You know, I happen to be selling software to nonprofit organizations like, you know, for example, like, um, you know, the um, Salvation Army or to uh, churches or to schools and they use the software to make their lives easier so I enjoy doing it um, so the important thing to 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 do is like to find a good a good job that you know you really feel good about the product that you're producing and selling mm -hmm. Dave you can see their uh, names right Oh, yes. Nick. So I'll let you call on people. I see Ronan and Nick have their hand up. Okay, Nick, what's your question there? Uh, clarifying that 
it is um, uh, important to also read people to see when they're slipping away and like also reading again with the example of the Slurpees. You can see that they have Slurpees. They don't want a homemade lemonade. They already have better stuff. So cut your losses there. Go to the other family. Right. So it's also important to be able to read people in situations and sales too, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. That's very important. And uh, Rohan, I saw your, your hand is up as well. Ronan. Ronan, Ronan I'm sorry. Ronan. Um, do you ever have time to eat? Um, yes. <laughs> yes, okay. I do. Um, I can show you what my schedule looks like um, if you want to take a, a quick peek. Um, okay. If, Justin, you want to share, let me share my screen real quick, I can um, show them what my schedule typically looks like in a... You should be able to share your screen. Okay, good. Let me, uh, let me come over. Okay, sharing screen in just a moment, right here. So you can see here, um, you know, it can, it can get pretty, pretty crowded. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the white stuff. spaces, the white spaces are really like um, my free time where I can eat. I can um, get well, you have lunch scheduled in done. every day. Yeah, that's At the around key. 12. <laughs> exactly. You just have to allocate your time to make sure that you can squeeze in lunch. Um, sometimes, sometimes I'm eating while I'm on the phone call, but you, you definitely want to make sure you carve out times like these where you're really just on the phone constantly, you know, for like a solid hour or, um, you know, sometimes more than that and just trying to find people who are in that ICP, you know, who are ideal clients who can do business with you. Question, who is Matt? Oh, I should stop sharing. That's my, that's my manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Caitlin, you have a question. So, assuming that, wait, do you want day soon? <laughs> okay. <laughs> And you and then you work and then you work and then you come back. How many phone calls will you get in a month? Um, I, I can get, you know, anywhere between eleven hundred to fifteen hundred in a month. Okay, what about in a year? Well, if I if I'm doing eleven hundred a month to fifteen hundred, let's say, um, you know, thirteen thousand. 14,000 in a year. Okay. Yeah. A lot of phone calls. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I saw another question. What was um, in the chat group? They were asking, what did I have to study you don't have to have a degree to sell. Um, some jobs require that you have at least a bachelor's degree, but it doesn't have to be in sales. It can be in just about anything, you know. Um, as long as you graduate from a from a college, you can you can get just about any sales job because what they really look for is your experience. You know, they really want to see that you've had experience selling other things before, and they when they have the interview with you. They're listening to how you're speaking. They're listening to how you're communicating because they, they want to ensure, they want to make sure that you have that charisma and that you can easily explain things to people. That's really what it's about, being able to build that relationship and being able to explain. So you don't need a specific degree for selling. As long as you have any four-year degree, you can find a good sales job. Absolutely. Um, John Paul, you have a question. Yeah, so... When you're speaking, like, is it all when you're selling products, right? Yeah. Like you're selling yeah. software, does it does it stay like the same price throughout the year, or is it like dependent on what season it is and 
things in like um software that are in season and things like that like your, your the prices of your products um no the price the price stays about the same um i'll share my screen again with you here so just sharing my screen right now so you can see here this is this is what i sell you know software where people can come to the website and say okay i need this one and i'm gonna pay 300 a month or 3600 dollars a year for that as you recall my average sale price is 3100 dollars because a lot of people just need the smallest one and that's fine but some people need a lot of you know a bigger package but this this price to answer your question it stays the same it's never changed for the last four years you know uh, mm. what can change is how frequently people will act. Um, usually during July, during the summer months, people are on vacation. So my sales may come down a little bit. I'll have to make more phone calls to find people who aren't on vacation, you know? So I'll have to work mm -hmm. a little bit harder this month to make up for all the people that are you remember how we showed you on the illustration, a lot of people are getting distracted by vacation. A lot of those seeds are being distracted by all the thorns. So I'm gonna need to sow more seeds to make up for the slower months. That's the only thing that changes, but the price is the same. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I saw some hands up. Ronan, you have another question. Uh, and yes. I have a question too. So, um, do you, does your phone lose a lot of charge when you don't have today? <laughs> That's a great question. And w it would, it really would if I didn't keep it plugged in, but, <laughs> but I constantly have it plugged in to the laptop. So I have it right okay. next to me, so it never loses charge. <laughs> okay. The charge must be working overtime then. Yes, sir. <laughs> My laptop is constantly plugged in. That causes it to somehow have a 255% battery power. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but it does. All right. I'm seeing some more questions here. Um, let's question. see here. How much money do you make in a year? Um, let's see. I earn, a, I earn over 100000 a year because my job pays me the base salary of uh, 55,000 a year. And then the other 50 to 70,000 is coming in from sales. I have a question. So does like, does your job, is your job only based like in Maryland or is it all states? That's a great question. So um, now since we've had COVID, we are hiring people from all across the country because all of my presentations are like what we're doing right now, where I share my screen and I allow my, my prospects or my ICP people to actually see the software. And um, I don't need to be in person for that. Um, let me share my screen with you again. You can see exactly what I'm talking to you about. So like I would call a client and say, hey, you know, thanks for thanks for this time that we have today. You know, I'd like to show you this software it's based on what you've shared with me. You need a place where you can have all the contact information of all your people and keep track of it. This is the software that I sell. And I, I go through the process of explaining how it works, how easy it is to use why they need it because they need a way to easily um you know launch fundraisers and things like this that's what the software does it allows these organizations to raise awareness about different issues that are hurting their communities this for example is a is an organization that creates they build shoes for countries in africa that need shoes and they go out and they raise money so that they can make more shoes and have them shipped over to these people who need them, you know? Um, and they use our software to do that. So I explain that to them. I show them examples and you don't have to be in person. You can be, I can be here in Maryland and helping someone over in California who needs the software. 
So to answer your question, we can hire people from all across the country. Um, Jaden, you have a question? Thank you. How long do you work a day? I'm sorry? How long do you work a day? Um, on, a, on a short day, I work until 5.30. Um, sometimes I have, you know, people like who, uh, who have a lot of questions or who I'm following up with. And so sometimes it can go a little bit later, like until 7.30. What time do you start? I usually start at uh, on 8.50 a.m. That's when we have our first meeting. We have a team meeting at 8.50 a.m. And then at nine o'clock a.m., that's when we're, we're making calls and reaching out. Oh, wow. Yeah. And Kelsey, you have a question? I'm still asleep at that time. Okay. <laughs> how long have you been thinking of doing this job and how long have you been in the job? I've been in this particular job for a little over a year. And what was your first part of the question? Um, how long have you been thinking about being a salesperson? It was funny. Like I never was like thinking about it consciously. It was just, it was just something that was available when I came out of college. And I tried it. I was curious. Remember ABCs, always be curious. I was curious about it first. I didn't think of myself as a salesperson, but I started to try it because I was curious. And then I found out that I was actually pretty good at it. And so I, I kept on doing it with different companies. Mm -hmm. I have another question. Do you get to spend time with your family? Can you say that again? Do you get to spend time with your family? Absolutely, absolutely. If you can see my place, I actually had a birthday party for my wife a long ago. I decorated the entire um, apartment here and we, we spent plenty of time, you know? Um, I took off, you can take off any day that you want with my job. You just have to understand if you, if you don't call people, on a particular day, you're going to have to make it up, you know, on a different day. So, you know, if I don't, if, if I'm enjoying a happy birthday with my family, I need to understand that I'm going to have to make some more calls the day before and the day after to make up for the 55 calls that I should have made in order for me to stay on track. So you can, you can spend time with as much as you want. You just need to understand how many calls you need to make to make up for the, the lost time. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Tell her happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll let her know. <laughs> yeah. um, speaking of which, it's about 7, 16 p.m. where I am. Um, Ronan, we can answer your question and Ryan, we can answer your question and then I'll have to actually I'll have to keep on going here. Sorry about that. We only paid Dave for an hour. <laughs> so Rowan, why don't you go ahead? What do you, what do you have for me? Uh, was your job affected by the pandemic or not? Well, um, at first it was, but, um, but the interesting thing about my job is that it's, it's all about software. So what we, we, what we found out was like, um, we found out that a lot of people needed it more because our software that we sell is usable on the internet. So when people started using our software, they realized, wow, like I can actually use this without being in my office because people can't be in their offices uh, a lot of times with COVID. So to answer your question, our sales actually went up during the pandemic, you know, because more people needed a system that could go online like this one, where they can actually access all of the information of their client and easily see who these people are and communicate with them, you know? So th this is actually a blessing in disguise for us. Last question from Ryan. Many people are saying happy birthday in the chat. 
I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? Many people are saying happy birthday in the, in the chat. Oh, wait, who's, who's birthday? Oh, Aiden, happy birthday. Okay, excellent, awesome, happy birthday. A lot of people are asking what what is your job? My job? My job is selling software. Yeah. I, 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 a I, lot of people are asking. I think it might be referring to specific company rather than overall job. Oh, okay. Um, well, Not the company sure. I work for is Network for Good. Let me share it here. show you and you can look them up you can um if you want to write down the name of the company it's it's called network for good um, and this is what we provide we provide simple smart fundraising software okay and um my job is to reach out to organizations that need this software so that they can easily fundraise and keep track of all of their donors so that's my job I work for Network for Good. Did you go? Okay. Great. So, um, so let me see here. So, yeah, we we I do have to run at this point. I appreciate your time, Mr. Field, and your time, everyone here on this call. Um, you know, hopefully, we can do this at some point in time in the future. And I, I hope that you guys learned a lot about conversion ratios, commissions, and selling you know because you can you can have you can have a job that pays you an hourly rate like if you work at burger king or you know chick-fil-a they'll pay you like 15 dollars an hour but you're not making a commission on every chick-fil-a nugget that you sell you know <laughs> but if you have a sales job you know you can actually go out there and sell nuggets on your own and actually make a commission and you know you have to handle the, the rejection but you can actually control what you earn a lot more. <laughs> That's great. Uh, can everyone unmute yourself and say, thank you, Dave. Thank, thank, you. You, Dave. thank you, Thank you, Dave. My thank you. My thank you. Thank you. An honor and a privilege. Thank a you, sir. You're welcome. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye. All right, and wait, bye. This is bye. Bye. Everyone, see bye. you next week. Bye.